But then there came the Platters and Fats Domino and Little Richard and Marty Robbins and Roy Aka and Hank Williams as my greatest influence. And George Jones. It don't get no better than he said I'll love you till I die. Well, George Jones called me and he goes, hey Ronnie. I want you to do a painting of me getting a DUI on my lawnmower. And I said, George, that's the best idea I've ever heard in my life for a painting. He said, well, can you do it? And so Christmas Day, three years ago, I went over, and you may not know this about me, but I paint, so I painted that picture. And I think we have some of them. But anyway, George Jones looked at that picture for 30 minutes. That's right, Grandpa. Grandpa, what in God's name are you drinking over here? How you doing, buddy? Hey, I gotta come over here and say hi to this guy. Grandpa, what do you do? What's your name? Moose. Moose. <laughs> That's your brother. Hey, Moose, what are you drinking? Uh, Lepimitus. What? You have to taste the farm. <laughs> Uh, no thank you, Moose, but anyway, it looks like it's doing you a really good job there, Moose. Okay. Happy Valentine's Day. Wow, that is cute. Thank you. That's wonderful. Oh, that's for me? Well, thank you. Isn't that sweet? Thank you. Let me see. I love you too, honey. There you go. Hey, by the way. I have a new book out. I'm going to do a little promoting now. That's right. Now, this is the book and the only book that I'm going to write about me. Now, I write books. I have another book that I just finished about my great-grandfather. And by the way, he went to the California Gold Rush in 1849 on a horse. He left Nashville on a horse. It took him eight months. <laughs> I have his diary and I, that's why I wrote this wonderful love story and it's about my great grandfather our great grandfather and on his journey in Oklahoma I never will forget because in his diary he heard this And he said, I don't like the sound of those drums. <laughs> and there was a voice coming out of the wilderness and said, well, he's not our regular drummer. <laughs> true story. That's a joke. But anyway, the book is a true story. It's called The Fever. That's the novel that I've just finished. But... This is the story of my life. It's called Bringing It To You Personally. Imagine why, because of the song. And it's uh, probably the only book I'm going to write about me. And i tell you what I did. I didn't hold no bars back. But I did keep it positive. I didn't do anything negative. I could have, but I didn't. Scott England, the, the actual author is here. Scott, step into the doorway and say hey. There's Scott right there. Hey, I gotta tell you, the guy that brought my lunch today at the Italian restaurant right down the street, I'm gonna get, do you have this? You do now, hey. So one good turn deserves another. There you go, thank you, sir. But anyway, also, I'm gonna show you a couple other things in a minute, but everybody up here is gonna do something for you. Now, Jody. My nephew, my brother's son, is now a deputy sheriff and is serving warrants. <laughs> Why he wants to do anything like that in today's world, I have no earthly idea. <laughs> but I got to tell you, when he was a little boy, he came up to me and he said, Uncle Ronnie, he said, you know how Hank Snow did I Drop lady, listen up. He said, Uncle Ronnie, you know how Hank Snow 
Now, you know, I'm fortunate enough that I grew up in a world that I got to know Hank Snow. And I got to talk to Hank Snow and do shows with him. You don't want to hear my favorite Hank Snow story? Let me tell you, it was 1955 at the Jacksonville, Florida Theater. It was Hank Snow.